No one ever was <clears throat> To catch them is my real test To train them is my cause <laughs> Wide Each broken mind to understand Pokemon, gotta catch him. It's you and me. All right. Hey, everybody. Well, we got two people on here. I am overwhelmed by your kindness. Hey, I'm gonna wait. I've never done an Instagram live before, so I am so stoked for this. Can y'all hear the music? Is that is? Can you hear the music in the background? Rocking out to some Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So hey everybody, all right, so uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Scott, and for those of you who do know me, my name is Scott. Um, we are doing today, I, I was like, earlier today, uh, I said, man, I really gotta go to Walmart to buy a, um, to buy a toothbrush. Uh, and as I was thinking about buying a toothbrush, I was like, what other things do they have at Walmart? So um, they got Pokemon cards. So, for those of you who don't know too much extra about me, uh, I am a Pokemon card collector. I'm a vintage Pokemon card collector. Um, and uh, like I've got some, you know, it's just like archived cards that are like older um, and I go through and like grade them and such. So today, uh, and I haven't touched like packs of Pokemon cards in a while cause like the newer stuff, I just, I didn't have a connection with it yet. So I decided, you know what, today, hey, Katie Hamrick, hello. Um, I have no idea if any of you are gonna like this or not, but I just wanted to share something I'm passionate about with you today. Um, so I'm gonna open up some Pokemon packs um, that I found at Walmart and just kind of enjoy it. So if you leave, I am gonna be 0% offended. I am so, I'm just stoked to be here. Um, so mind my, uh, hor my setup right now, cause I am not a streamer, uh, nor do I do this kind of stuff regularly. I have you all on a music stand. So that's like, Awesome. Let's get to the main event. I'm gonna start with a, um, oh, oh, remember when I said I'm not a professional? There we go. So, uh, everything that I've got right now is, uh, th this is my, like, oh, what I love, Mario and stuff and some old, like, collectibles in there. But anyway, so what I'm gonna open up today is this thing called a mystery power cube. Yeah, yeah, mystery power cube. So this is not like newer stuff, I would assume. Um, if you collected Pokemon cards as a kid, you will recognize Venusaur from the base set, Charizard from the base set, and Blastoise from base set first edition. Well, it's not first edition, that's actually Shadowless. I'm not gonna go into those details because that's not what we're here for, um, but I could later if y'all interested. But um, this looks like it is a repackaged pack, like they bought a bunch of cards that were just like hanging around um and uh they put them into this uh this container and they're reselling them so it wasn't that expensive so i'm just gonna crack open to it and see what they got so here we go and the one thing oh my gosh this is what i get for having bad fingernails hold on all right but do you things do you do got some pokemon music on in the background just to set the mood um so here we go cracking in here. I don't know if y'all are like fans of collectibles or not, but this first feeling of like opening up the packaging, it's like number one, like, hey environment, what's up? Cellophane is awful. Uh, but at the same time, oh, it's just, it's good. It's a good feeling. It's a good endorphin. Uh, yes, very creative. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you for the bits. Is that what they say on like discord bits, upvotes? I don't know. Um, Yes, try to be creative we can around here. So, um, on the original packaging here, it says there are some uh, seeded cards. So, where did it say that on the side? Look for these randomly seeded cards. Because what I'm assuming is that some of the older cards that I'm kind of into it for, or for it into, you know, those are words. Um, those are the cards I'm kind of after. I want these older ones, you know, like these older designs, like Noctowl from the second generation and Charizard and Pikachu from the first generation. And these other cards from like Rocket and Fossil and this would be the um, the Island set. So a bunch of these other cards I'm after, but it's probably gonna have some more current stuff, like from the more recent generations of Pokemon on through the uh, mid to the, the song Vacation from the movie. Absolutely. If I have it, let me see if I can find it. Pokemon 3, Pokemon Ultimate. No, I don't have that. I only have um, the first here. Uh, I'll do, um, how about the Poke Wrap? Will that do for right now, Liz Clevin? I hope so. Um, I can do, uh, 
Here it goes. To be the best there ever was. To shoot all the rest. Yeah, that's my cause. But it's a jiggle it, knitter and banky. All right, here we go. We're getting into it, folks. Ah, so I see some shinies going on here. I do not know the whole Pokemon rap. I do know, like, like the tail end of the beginning and start of every single, like, <laughs> verse, but not the rest of it because I'm a moron. All right, so here we go, folks. We're going to get in here. It looks like there's some good foil bends going on, which is always a good thing. So um, for those of you who don't know anything about Pokemon cards is that they are on a cardboard base here. And then on this extra layer, there is a layer of foil, which this is printed on. So especially the foil cards, because it's made of this metallic surface or like this metallic type foil paper is that you get this thing called a foil bend where you can kind of see here as opposed to something that's a little bit more straight. Let me grab one of these randos out of here um you'll see that like this one is pretty straight but this one is relatively bent so this is called a foil bend it is like the worst thing for cards and it's pretty sad but you know so be it um so we're gonna jump into it here this is a foil phantom who's super ador adorable i do know that this character is called mimikyu looks like a pikachu but it's not a pikachu well let's take a pikachu <laughs> man crack myself up all right and then a spinner uh who is from the second generation of pokemon foil there it's a foil con sorry revo reverse foil oh for those of you who don't know there are reverse foils or revo reverse hollows some people call them hollow foils um so this one is a reverse foil uh because this surface here is foiled not the actual picture which you would remember probably the most from like you know these cards where that section is you know shiny uh so did you know you were getting an edumacation around here well that's the kind of service that we provide around here at uh sours uh entertainment uh place so um Anyway, Spinarak, here we go. Next up, Skarmory, super cool looking Pokemon. Of course, it's also from the second generation. Um, it's another reverse foil, so pretty. And again, the example of that foil bend, ugh, how sad. Uh, but this Pokemon is a rare card for those of you who also don't know. Once again, more education times. Uh, if you remember from your childhood that there are commons and there are uncommons and there are rares. Or um, So right here, you've got this circle. There's from my uh, opening up the uh, box with a pen. Um, so this circle here shows that it's a common card, and then the star below shows that it is a rare card. So the uncommon is a uh, like a diamond shape that is a square that is turned uh, 45 degrees. Um, yeah, 45 degrees. That's angles. Math. All right. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and open up this next section. It looks like there's some sort of weird divider in the box here. Sweet unboxing, as uh, Liz said. I'm going to pop this open. Oh, how kind of them. They provided sleeves. So these plastic sleeves are used to protect cards, of course. I have an actual whole stack right here. I've got these thin ones for cards that are like, just need to kind of be protected. And then I've got these harder plastic ones that protect from damage and bending. Um, so you can double up on these, like put a card in here and slide that in. Any gahoozles. Uh, moving on. We're getting into this next section here. We're going to open up this fat stack. Woohoo! All right. What do we think we got, folks? We got, we got a Charizard. We're going to get a Blastoise. We're going to get... Who knows? All right. So uh, first thing in here was uh, Zorua, which I am not familiar with this Pokemon as much, although I do believe its evolution is pretty rad looking. Just a little bit bigger, but still... Oh, how, how's that view? Is that better? Pokemon. All right. There we go. Perfect. All right. So next up... We have Litten, who is a fire starter Pokemon, much like Charmander from the first generation. Litten is from, I believe, Sun and Moon, which is the second most generate second most recent generation before Sword and Shield. Um, and uh, Litten is uh, the pre-evolutionary form of Incineroar, who is a very uh, popular Pokemon, uh, very popular nowadays, uh, because uh, Incineroar is in Super Smash Bros. Uh, for the Switch. I believe it's Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but I am not a Smash Bro. I am more like, I love myself some Zelda. So coming up next, Staryu. Who doesn't love a good Staryu? My dear old sweet Misty Girl, first crush beside Jessica Rabbit. Whoa, getting into the details here. Uh, <laughs> uh, Misty's uh, Pokemon generally, uh, also Starmie, beautiful Pokemon. Love that little jewel in the middle. It's like, what is it? You know, with that first sense of wonder. Oh man, first generation talking about Pidgeotto. Beautiful Pokemon airmail. <laughs> USPS, am I right? Current hot button. 
uh, issues. Just moving on. Uh, so Pidgeotto, beautiful card. You just love the art. You gotta love that. Uh, Mizue, thank you very much for this beautiful illustration for Blessing. Larvitar! Oh, man, Larvitar from the second generation of Pokemon. Larvitar is this really cool, I believe, possibly, I know, right? Um... Uh, sorry, uh, Liz said rip, and I think that was in reference to the dear old, uh, dear old USPS, which is going down the, uh, down the drain. Um, but Larvitar, uh, not unlike the USPS system, uh, moving on, uh, Larvitar is the pre-evolutionary form of, um, uh, Tyranitar. Uh, Tyranitar is a really cool looking Pokemon. Maybe we might see Tyranitar. Who knows? Give me a, a, a like, a comment, a share. YouTube. This isn't YouTube, but anyway, uh, if you want to see a Tyranitar coming up. Oh my gosh. Did you, did you see this? This is not magic, folks, here. I literally have a second Zora. Look at that. I want to talk about value. Double the value here, folks. Look at that. Beauty. All right, moving on. Sorry, my I'm not minding to uh, put these in like sleeves because these cards are not that valuable, so I'm not too worried about. It. I'm just gonna put them in the uh, in the boxes that I have where I keep my collection. Moving on, Magikarp. Oh, beautiful, beautiful Pokemon it is. Enter the Dragon. Lots of people didn't ever actually play the card game. I did um, with my cousins and uh, Magikarp. Um, this little move here, you know, they all have attacks, and this is flip a coin. If heads put a card that evolves from this Pokemon, uh, from your discard pile, onto this Pokemon to ev in, uh, to evolve it, which is really cool. So let's say earlier in the battle, you know, Pokemon battle, you were battling with a Gyarados, which is a really, you know, like, super um, beefy Pokemon. Lots of HP, these hit points up here, probably lots of good moves, because they're different versions of that card. Uh, if you used it already, it was in the discard pile. Hey, you know, well, just use this move, and you can pull them out of that discard pile smack them on there sorry magic carp uh smack them on there and uh, just do some damage knock out some pokemon win some prizes yeah oh goes the ponds in iowa for pokemon go talk about pokemon go yo i have not been on that since i lived in baltimore we would go around like have it a great maryland where there are lots of like um you know arbor or harbors and stuff where you could catch cool pokemon but iowa iowa ponds in um for Pokemon Go, it's, I'll have to take a trip to good old Iowa. Thanks for that little hint there, Liz. Uh, welcome, welcome. Hey, good to hear from you as well. Thank you so much for joining. All right, Cosmog, Psychic Pokemon, has a Pokemon ability, which is not Pokemon Powers, which you would have seen on some of these older um, some of these older cards here. you got Pokemon Powers. This is very similar, but it's an ability. Oh, snap. Also, mind my um, splitting of attention such a good song yeah yeah Pokemon Mama. when I was a kid they used to blare this in the gym when we would do like the mile inside just to get us excited because it was raining or something it was good good sweet memories of being you know in fifth grade and doing a you know 23 minute mile uh so Cosmog cool mumble <laughs> Beautiful. Ah, Alolan Geodude. Geodude. So Geodude, sorry for the Pokemon voices. They just kind of come out. They're like, you know, they're they're deep inside me. Um, you know, deep rooted. I just have them in my brain from the show. Uh, the Al Alolan Geodude, if you might know that Geodude is a rock type Pokemon, but um, Alolan species of Pokemon, they um, take on different types. So this one's actually an electric type Pokemon. Um, you see here that they've got the electric type here. They can do electric type moves like Smash Bomb. Uh, so it's like they had a new opportunity oh my goodness hannah ray welcome to the stream you know talking here with the other thousand ten other ten thousand other people who have joined uh, <laughs> um welcome thanks for coming i'm gonna give you a little wave because i forgot to be doing that um so yeah, an Alolan Geodude, just this wild, cool-looking Pokemon. You see how they changed up the style. Maybe if we get another Geodude, I'll be able to show you the differences. I'll put that off to the side. Oh, Pharaoh Seed, very cool. Not too familiar with this Pokemon. I wasn't too keen into the second generation as much. I was really like a first-generation homeboy. Um, but still, very cool. Awesome-looking card. Continuous Tumble. Sounds like my life right now. You know what I mean. <laughs> Uh, Geo, uh, sorry, my gosh, Geo, Geo, Execute, very cool Pokemon, evolves into Executor, um, or Executor, um, this, uh, this lovely Pokemon here, um, I always felt really bad for this, this fella in the back, like, you know, really got the hard bargain, like, all your, all your brothers and sisters and significant others here are just, like, chilling, just looking like regular Pokemon with, like, cracked faces, this guy in the middle, he's like, <laughs> I'm good, but this fella in the back, I was just like, dude, He's dead. Like, he's the way he did. Um, 
one one name I will call out, which you'll see here, is Ken Sugimori. Ken Sugimori has to be my absolute favorite artist. Uh, Ken Sugimori is the initial con or, uh, initial artist for Pokemon who when they would go in and make the sprites for the video game, he would go back after they had created the sprites for the characters and actually reimagine what they looked like. A really interesting um, history of Pokemon, which I might go into in a future stream and talk about the history of Pokemon and why there were so many different um, ways the Pokemon looked like. But uh, Ken Sugimori, great artist, love his work so much. We'll, hopefully we'll see a lot more of it. I cannot describe to you the absolute joy. Folks, we're going to keep a tally here. This is, oh, Lindsay, what is going on? So good to have you on here. There's a little wave for you. Howdy, howdy. So uh, this is not a joke. We have three of these. Ja Day, what is up, Ja Day? Oh my gosh, I am live streaming. I am unboxing these cards. Thank you for the little reminder. This is a little uh, uh, cleanup here. I am doing an unboxing of some Pokemon cards. Stop it, Jay. <laughs> Thanks, Liz, coming to my defense. I know, Lindsay's here. It's a whole party. Um, I'm unboxing these Pokemon cards, just going through and having a blast, uh, giving everybody a little dose of... Um uh, a little dose of uh, nostalgia. So we have three of these folks. These cards have to be, I don't know, $10 billion a piece, uh, aka one penny. Uh, okay, the joy of some and the bane of others. We're going to leave these back here and keep how many uh, thousands of dollars I just cracked open from this case. Um, yes, we're learning so much. They are all Zora. That's correct. Zorua. Zorua? I, I'm going to have to look that up. But this, okay, this is actually an older card. I'm gonna, I am going to tell you a little bit about this. So this is an energy card, literally 60. This is actually 60 cards. Cards. I'm surprised it wasn't just 60 Zora. Thank you very much. Um, so this card right here is an energy card. When you would use, actually play the Pokemon uh, TCG trading card game, um, when you were battling with the Pokemon, you would use these energy cards and you would attach them to the Pokemon so that they could use their moves. Um, so these cards, they would come in a pack and kids would just literally throw them in their bikes, you know, like just throw them in there and they were complete trash, but they're actually really useful if you play the game because now um, they don't put as many energy cards. They're actually packs of energy cards that they sell um, to help people boost their, their card game. So anyway, um, this one is really cool because if you see here this little E or this big there is a rainbow yes absolutely we had a couple of those earlier it gave a little uh, less <laughs> thanks Liz yeah I'll definitely send you some money that's a lie um, this card here is a foil uh, this is a reverse foil which is relatively newer um, they instead of the picture being reverse or the picture being foil this act the uh, the rest of the card is foil so uh, yes um, I'll be sure to check and see if we get more of those. Um, so the um, these cards, this one here, this e-reader, so this was released with a couple of other series of Pokemon cards where on the side of the card, or on the bottom actually, there would be a strip that you could scan swipe into your Game Boy Advance e-reader attachment uh, for some benefits in games. Um, so it's, it was this really wild time when they were trying to make cards and like include them into like actual video gaming. If I can find more examples of this, I'll include them on my next stream just so you can see what that was like. Um, I, I will do a Yu-Gi-Oh! live stream next week. You got that right. I can also do Magic the Gathering. I am I am all for it, okay? There's another one, another e-reader. So this is an older card, and down here at the bottom you see 2003. So much, a little bit more of an older card, and it is a common. Moving on. Oh, Revive. So this is a really cool card. Maybe some of you might remember this one from your childhood binders. Revive was an item card that was in the original 102. There were 102 cards released in the first set of Pokemon cards called the Base Set. Um, this card here was an item card. It could revive a basic Pokemon and put it onto your bench so you could stoke up your Pokemon team. I don't know if you can hear this right now. Hold on one second. This is on the Pokemon soundtrack from the TV show. It's called Misty Song. She's uh, she's giving us a little serenade about being a water Pokemon trainer. So beautiful. So beautiful. Don't worry, folks. We're going to end this all out with I'm on the road to Viridian City, a beautiful gospel backup, just triumphant song. Um... So Revive is really cool because you see here, this is 2016. That is not, um, that's not uh, 1996 and 1997 when these cards were originally released. They did a re-release of old cards. Uh, give you a little bit more dose of nostalgia. We'll put that off to the side because it's cool. Brock's Gert. <clears throat> grit. Uh, Brock's Grit. So this is another card. Oh, bye, Lindsay. Toodaloo. Oh, toodles. And as they say in Guatemala, Alf um, they, uh, they have these, uh, these trainer cards, like you remember Brock from the TV show when he is a gym trainer, um, they had these cards that could help you in battle, which is super dope. 
Um, oh, Nidoran female. So cool. Nidoran female, one of the first gendered Pokemon. So cool because there was also a Nidoran male, which are the pre-evolutionary forms of Nidorina, Nidorino, Nido King, and Nido Queen. Uh, that was in no particular order. And uh, these cards were originally Grass-type Pokemon, but they changed them over to Psychic because they are Poison, as you see here. Poison Pin Pokemon. They could do things like uh, Scratch Attack and um, and I guess, well, let's see, be some other ones. P poison Pin, Pin Dart, whatever it might be. I have to go back and look at the original card. But yeah, very cool. First uh, gendered Pokemon. As you know, in the TV show, uh, Ash never refers to Pikachu as him or her, always it, which is a very big surprise. Poochiena, so cool. Look at that. Look at that. Puchiena was uh, from... Oh, there's Ken Sugimori. You see that here? Yeah, we're going to put him off to the side as well. Whoopsies. Um, yeah, Ken Sugimori is that original Pokemon artist that we discussed earlier. So neat. Love this background. It's very... Love that vibe. Whatever that might be. It's so cool. Reminds me of like a... I don't know, like... Like a like a like the carpet to that bus that you took in middle school that took you on a field trip. They always had those weird looking carpets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> relatable. Hashtag relatable. Um, moving on, I'm gonna put him off to the side. Ah, oh, Golduck, such a cool card, man. Golduck is the uh, as you see here evolves from Psyduck, moves from uh, uh, a gold color to a blue color. Uh, weird, you know what I'm saying? Um, no real good description about why his name is Golduck. But a uh, pretty powerful card, 110 HP. Uh, back in the day, that'd be like, you know, super, super strong. But now, um, bowling alley carpet. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's definitely what it is. Look at that. I would wear, I would hands down wear a shirt of this if that were a shirt. Like just that background, not minus the Poochiana. Sure, I might take like a little patch of him or whatever. But like, give me that shirt. That's what I want. Um, so Golduck. Yeah, wild looking card, Amnesia. Good, good attack makes you uh, either uh, confuse or let's see what, what changes it. Uh, choose a Pokemon. To, oh, can't use that attack during your next opponent's turn. Pretty good in a battle. Oh, Spirit Bomb. Totally wonky. This is from a, uh, why is his name in all caps? What are you, what are you doing there, huh? What are you screaming for, huh? Nobody else's name is in caps. You're special, huh? I mean, what a special piece of art that is. Spirit Bomb, not too much familiarity. I think from the fourth generation, maybe closer to Diamond and Pearl. Um, not sure if anybody else can correct me on that one, but... Uh, Anyway, oh, Ponyta. Where can you go wrong with Ponyta? Such a cool Pokemon. I know when I was a kid, there were always people who were like, well, they're boy Pokemon and girl Pokemon, and Ponyta's a girl Pokemon. I was like, get out of here. Ponyta, a, fire, a horse that's on fire? That's freaking wild. Revolves into, evolves into Rapidash? Don't talk about a cool Pokemon. Horses on fire. I mean, not. I mean, you know, we're not burning. I'm a vegetarian. So, I mean, like... Anyway, uh, yeah, Ponyta, cool Pokemon. Ah, oh, Tentacool. Involved form into uh, Tentacruel. I never got that when I was a kid. Cruel, actually, Tentacruel, but Tentacool. Yep, Poison-type Pokemon. Used to be a uh, Water-type Pokemon, but they decided a long time ago that Poison-type Pokemon should be Psychic. It's a jellyfish. Look at that. Ken Sugimori. There's that name again, huh? Beautiful art. Oh, Dratini. You want to talk about another Pokemon that was divisive as a kid? Uh, this is oh, just such a good Pokemon because they were like, Dratini's a girl Pokemon, but Dragonite's a boy Pokemon. I was like, nah, we're not having that here. You know, these Pokemon are for everybody. That's what the world of Pokemon's about, yo. Um, I don't say yo in real life. I don't know why I said it now. You can forgive me for that. Thanks. Uh, so Dratini, one thing that you'll notice that all these colors that we have here on these cards indicate their types, like psychic and water and fire. And then there's dark. As a kid, there was no such thing as a dark Pokemon. Uh, all Pokemon were good. It's just their trainers that make them do good things. That's the wise word of Ekans. Uh, once said that in an episode of Pokemon. But this one, dragon type, is a relatively new addition. It used to be, um... Just uh, not as opposed to a color uh, in, of energy card, but a, just a type. Like, they'd be considered dragon type. They could use dragon moves. But this was a new addition uh, to the Pokemon world when they changed it into dragon energy. Bronzor. Super cool Pokemon. Really cool looking. He evolves into this awesome... Oh, gosh. I forget his... Belzong? No, I forget his name. He's this giant bell Pokemon. Plato said that. Yeah, Plato... Oh, there must be a lag. I'm just noticing that. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I think Pla I think Plato did say something about Pokemon. Um, you know, I just think that makes sense. The Greeks, they had a great Pokemon card collections. Uh, they had them on urns, you know. Ammonite, very cool Pokemon, evolves from a, an, an unidentified fossil. I have to take that stuff to Cinnabar Island to get uh, checked out to see what type of Pokemon it was. Got it from Mount Moon. You carried it all the way through to the end of the game. Uh, Ammonite, so cool. Really strong for a uh, stage one Pokemon. Really cool. Tickle. <laughs> oh, can you imagine this thing coming at you and tickling you? I am not about that, folks. That would be... <laughs> Just imagine that coming to you in a nightmare. Be awful. All right, moving on. 
Another Spirit Bomb. What is up with uh, Spirit Bomb? Must be pretty popular. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent's active Pokemon can't retreat. Oh, man, you're going to keep him there until you can knock him out. Curse Drop. That sounds like my uh, uh, fr uh, Friday uh, nights. I have no idea what that means. Again, moving on. Oh, Pidgey. Who didn't love Pidgey? Such a great Pokemon. Number 16 in the original lineup of Pokemon. Immediately after, that would be the initial... Um, Let's see here. It'd be after the initial starter Pokemon. Moving on through 16. I think somewhere in between there is probably either Caterpie or Weedle. I'd have to go back and check. But yeah, really cool. Pidgey evolves into Pidgey Odo, which we got earlier. Super cool. Mind this chaos off to the side of me just knocking the car. Whoa. So uh, that's it for the stream. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Moving on. I'll pick up those cards in a second. Those ones will be the real mystery. Very cool. Another energy card. Very nice. Moving on, another energy card. Looks, we're, we're gonna build a deck out of these, y'all. We're gonna go up in, in a ba Pokemon battle. Anyone, feel free to uh, make a Pokemon deck your own and we can play against each other. How about that, huh? Oh, Pokedex! Who doesn't have a, what good Pokemon trainer doesn't have a Pokedex, huh? Look at that, really cool. This is one of those cards that was reprinted. This is one of the ones from the original set, the base set. It was reprinted in 2016. I believe that was called the Generation Set, which is really cool, awesome. Very neat. And Potion, another one from the Generation set. This is an original card um, that was like way overpowered because it could just heal your Pokemon whenever. You could use as many of these items on your turn as you wanted. Reprinted in 2016. I'm going to put this right here in the middle as we jack up Viridian City while I grab these cards that fell on the floor. I'm on the road to Viridian City, yeah. Mind my voice. All right, and, uh, oh, man, I could have sung this song at church. It's like, it's a, it's a bop, man. Look at that. All right, Houndour. Houndour is a really cool Pokemon. Um, evolves into Houndoom, introduced in the second generation of Pokemon, one of the first dark Pokemon, along with uh, Murkrow, um, as you can see this dark energy type here. Kangaskhan, very cool Pokemon, first generation of Pokemon as well. Uh, really cool little, um, ah, Tulula's. Good luck on, um, uh, Good luck, puppy. Yes, a very good puppy. Uh, good luck on um, working up on that schedule. Let me know if you need any help, huh? See you uh, see on Slack. And uh, yes, <laughs> Kangaskhan is a beautiful, because this is a parent Pokemon. You see here in its pouch, much like a kangaroo, it has a baby Kangaskhan. There is a deep, deep rumor about this Pokemon right here actually being another type of Pokemon. I'll keep it nearby in case we encounter that. It'd be pretty wild. Delcaddy, very cool. An evolutionary form of Skitty, I also believe, uh, Generation 2, if not Generation 3. Again, familiarity after Generation 1 for me, not so much, but still a really cool looking card. Imagine having that in in your, in your sitting room, just kind of chill in there. Super cool. Not a monster, you know. Uh, an upside down Pidgey, because I dropped this one. Again, super cool card from Generation 1. And then we've got Grimer. Ah, oh, dude, just literally a pile of grime. What more could you want in a Pokemon? Just like, just a pile of sludge. And it says, it was born from sludge on the ocean floor in a sterile environment. The germs within its body can't multiply, and it dies. Wow, how about that? Let's keep him nice and filthy. Beautiful. Grimer. What more could you want? His evolutionary form is Muk, M-U-K, which is, oh, also, Ken Sugimori. There's that original artist. We love Ken Sugimori. We stan, we stan Ken Sugimori. I guess that's it. And Meowth. Meowth, that's right. Super cool Pokemon. Part of Team Rocket. Only first known Pokemon that's non-legendary that learned how to speak, actually learned how to speak from English classes that were going inside uh, right off the alley where he used to live. He wanted to impress a girl Meowth, uh, so he learned how to speak in English. Um, and uh, it's a really cool, uh, really cool little, I mean, not English, just learn how to speak. Uh, his Japanese voice actor is really cool. Really cool story behind the voice actor of the original Meowth. I can go into that in the future. Uh, but as a um, as a trans person, this uh, this character actor here, uh, I can go into that in the future, but it's a, it's a beautiful story. Um, I'll, I'll go into that in the future. All right, so that was it for the first half. Uh, I'm gonna go into the second half here and I'm gonna pile all these cards together that we absolutely love, the ones that gave us a little bit more of a history lesson. And if I don't get, you know, 30 more Zora uh, from this pack, I know that I'll be upset. So I don't know about you, but here we go. Here's the other half, folks. Let's talk about the art for the back of this Pokemon card right here. Back of the Pokemon cards, super cool art. When I was at, oh, B Stubbs, what is going on? Thank you for joining the stream. Um, we have this, the back of the Pokemon card here, uh, a little bit of a lesson. Uh, 
if you notice this Pokemon ball, uh, as of course, everybody saw this as, as a kid. These were the backs of the Pokemon cards. You would hold it up as a kid, be like, look, I've got the power. Um, Pokemon ball is actually opening up from the wrong direction. So not upside down. Uh, it would always open up generally red top up. Um, but as you notice this latch here at the bottom from where the laser that shot out that would collect them back into the Pokeball and just open up the Pokeball in general, or if you tapped it, it would expand the Pokeball from its smaller size, its pocket size, to its throwable size. Um, it's supposed to be on the top, not supposed to be on the bottom. I don't know, maybe there's some kind of like technology or differences between the different regions, but uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much wrong. <laughs> So, and uh, one time in a future stream, I will go into talking about Pokemon grading, which is uh, another whole world, uh, another whole bushel of clams to get into. But um, you see around here, the edge, it's nice and blue. And then you get this, oh, what's that? What's this little uh, white notch we got here? Yeah, that's a good way to reduce the grading of the card, which means like, what is it set at? Is it set at mint? Is it set at near mint? Is it cherry mint? Is it um, playable? Is it, or is it played? Or is it... Um, in bad condition here so this one is a good sign of a card that has seen some sort of some badness probably some uh bump up in a bump up in the packaging you know just probably hit a corner wrong or something oh there's a pokemon which i know nothing about zuilios super cool dark type pokemon got some good moves here lots of uh pokemon creators or illustrators with their uh initial or their name just like lowercase like i mean hey i think you deserve capital letters i don't know about you but uh yeah moving on molly super cool pokemon could never quite figure this out it says it's a deceiver pokemon i guess that proves a point is that oh, who is the actual pokemon is it this uh thing with the eyes right here or is it this wild crocodile looking thing in the background huh maybe that's why it's a deceiver it is steel type i think one of the oh it's the second steel type we've encountered super cool looking all right moving on Enough. Ooh, Salandit. Never seen this Pokemon before. I would assume, let's see here, when was it? It was released in 2017. So this is probably from like either Sun and Moon or X and Y, which were, um, maybe I've got that reversed. Uh, Sun and Moon, X and Y. That no, was X and Y, then Sun and Moon, and then out Sword and Shield. Could also be from Sword and Shield. Who no, 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 Sword and Shield is too recent for that. But very cool looking Pokemon. It's in the mountains. It looks like lava, but it's psychic type. You do the math. Who knows, folks? Moving on. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that dark type Pokemon energy. 2013, a little bit of an earlier card. And again, for the music, folks, I don't know if you can hear this. You will always be my best friend. I don't know if you knew this, but like at the end of every Pokemon episode, they used to have these like wicked awesome ballads that would like, you know, talk about friendship. I mean, like, who doesn't need a little bit more of that in their lives right now, huh? Some friendship. Oh, a water type. Can you feel the energy here, folks? This is literally water in a card. You put this on, splash. Oh, it just powers up those Pokemon. You know, what more could you ask for? Professor Oak's hint. Draw until you have seven cards in your hand. Your turn ends. This card is a kind of a reprint uh, from the first base set of Pokemon cards. It is originally supposed to be Professor Oak, where it was pretty much just that view, not really with the book, where you would actually uh, discard your hand and draw seven cards. But this one is a little bit of a different... Um process you just draw until you have seven cards in your hand and then your turn ends just to beef you up for the next turn in case you're uh you know you're missing out uh on cards that you want but ken sugimori there's that artist again love him oh misty's determination reminds me of the gym heroes and gym challenge uh sets where they would have all the cards based off of the gym trainers from the original series koga sabrina um erica and lieutenant surge blaine and so on uh, giovanni and brock and misty uh ken sugimori Again, all those character designs that we know and love so much. The reason why Pikachu looks the way he does. It does. Sorry if you caught earlier it. But yeah, Misty's Determination. Very cool. Oh, Pelipper. I believe this is from the um, Emerald and... Uh, sorry, um, Ruby and Sapphire uh, generation of Pokemon. That would be the third generation. Super cool. Game Boy Advance involved from Wingull. Uh, there's a good Wingull that used to live in one of the Bay Cities in, uh, in that game that you would just fly around the house and you'd chase after it. Remember doing that? Played those games a little bit. Pelipper, very cool. Normal type, not water type, although it's a it's although it's a um, pelican. So strange. You think it'd be water, right? Dunsparce. Very neat looking Pokemon. It's just like a, a land snake Pokemon. Looks like it would live in the desert. Kind of like reminds you of uh, Dune, you know, 
so cool looking very cool not ground type though land snake but not ground it is a normal type uh which is very bizarre the bird from little Mer oh yeah totally right yeah i mean it is a pelican you know super cool yeah man i need to go back go back and watch little mermaid i feel like it's been i've been on the ride at disney like how many times i can count but like seen the movie probably like once maybe twice i'm sensing a movie night in the future maybe we do a little stream of uh little mermaid who knows a lowland grimer there we go there's another one of those types uh so we had a lowland geodude earlier geodude was normally a rock type fighting type pokemon uh made of rocks but here we see in uh, a lowland grimer we had a grimer earlier that was psychic type uh, originally grass type but it, here we've got it as a dark type look at that it's got that like nasty sludge on the bottom ew total vom am i right gross so cool looking though love that oh these these attacks here you see uh this means that you can attack if you remember how i talked about having energy attached to the pokemon in order to use the appropriate move uh this one it's just that just that little star there that means that it is regular type pokemon move it means you can use any type of energy to fulfill that need so you don't need too dark or too you know water or whatever it might be you can just use two of any super cool Awesome, a lowland grind. Oh, and this one right here uh, has that little space that does not have, as you notice, like a little electric symbol or anything. No, no proper symbol. This means that you can use this attack without having ener any energy attached to the card. Super neat. Gives you a little head up in battle. Alolan Rattata. All right, here comes a little divisive conversation. Uh, Ratatat is what I called this Pokemon when I was a kid, uh, but apparently it is not. It is um, Rattata, and I think that comes from the Pokemon TV show. When this Pokemon would pop out of its ball or just pop out of the grass, it would say, Rattata! Or, oh, please forgive that horrible, horrible uh, imitation. That was awful. But uh, Alolan um, Rattata, Rattata uh, has this little mustache here, which is super cool. Looks like me right now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, anybody who knows uh, me, again, my name's Scott. Thanks for joining the stream. I'm real professional here. Dropped all the cards earlier just to go show you how professional I am. Uh, but yeah, has that really cool mustache, which I love. Whoa. Oh, Passimian, look at that. Oh, I get it. I got it. It is it, instead of a, uh, it's got a persimmon on its head that's pretty funny look at that i guess it'd be fighting type yeah because it's got that fighting type energy it's got a punch intentional grounding discard a pokemon tool card from your hand if you don't this attack does nothing so you have to have one of those cards in your hand in order to use it wild and uh look at that in the background i wonder who might that might be a second pokemon featured in a card how wild is that get into a little conversation about this pokemon later bronzor another bronzor i think it's bronzong is the evolutionary form i was talking about earlier like a temple bell super cool looking yeah wild you just kind of like wonder what it would be like to be standing next to this pokemon irl oh, almost looks like it's foil but it's not it's got that little cool vibration thing on the outside yeah you know like what does this thing eat you know discs uh scrap metal just like drink a candle croy and just throw it to it like here have have a little snack bronzor and thank you moving on and what do we got? Trico. Very, very cool. Trico is one of the starters from the third, um, the third Chikorita Trico Diamond and Pearl. Or maybe this is Diamond and Pearl. I think that might be. Oh, now I'm trying to think of who was the third generation of starters. I think, I think this is Ruby and Sapphire, if anyone can correct me. But, uh, yeah, starter Pokemon, Trico. Very cool. Just a basic little Pokemon, 50 HP little uh, little dweeb but i'm sure he evolves into a great pokemon Gr uh grove oil grove oil Gro grove oil grove oil grove oil that's right very cool awesome c dot neat little seed pokemon i love this one I like when they switch up the art styles because of course they got like a bunch of different styles they've got like this uh let's go into uh one of these earlier cards from mr uh, ken sugimori um You've got just like a picture of the Pokemon, just like someone drew it, you know, took the time to make a little cartoon. But then you have ones where they change up the art style a little bit, have like this, like what looks like a watercolor or like a, um, like someone did it with colored pencil, which is really cool. And then you get these ones where they change it up. And this one looks like it's made out of like a, you know, construction paper, like a little kid did it as an art project, but it's still so neat looking, you know, how beautiful. Ah, life is crazy. Oh, there's another Trico. Look at that. Wood gecko Pokemon, you know? Yeah, uh, I think generally, I think one of them had like a little, like a little stick in his mouth that he would carry around. I think it was Ash Trico in one of the TV shows. He would have a little stick that he would carry around looking all cool and like, I'm aloof, you know, you can't control me. But yeah, Trico, another Trico, very cool. Number two, we still haven't gotten a, a fourth uh, Zorua here. I'm pretty, pretty sad about that. I, I, I feel a fourth one coming. 
Oh, wow. Cacnea. Very cool. This cactus Pokemon uh, belonged to uh, James from Team Rocket later on in the series. And then I believe it had evolved. And it's a spiny Pokemon. Woo. It's a cactus. So uh, if it would hug you, uh, say toodaloo. Very sad. Uh, get, 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 uh, get pricked a little bit. Get some uh, nasty cactus pokes. But so be it. Very cool Pokemon. Living cactus. What's up, Arizona? Oh, Vulpix. Look at this. An Alolan Vulpix. Very cool. Got that same art style, kind of like a kid drew it, but like it's still I'm not saying that it's like lower quality, but it's just so it's just so joyful. You know, you look at this and you're like, man, but I wouldn't pay to roll around the snow with a with an Alolan Vulpix. You know, just play around, toss toss some throw snow around. You know, just have me and my Pokemon just chilling out. Super cool. Got this. Uh, the uh, the the cool thing about Vulpix for any of you who might remember Vulpix is a fire Pokemon evolves into Nine Tails. Uh, they use fire types moves like Fire Blast, and Brock had one in the TV show. Actually, got it from a from a, a Pokemon breeder who wanted to move on. They just felt like they had a connection, so Brock got that Pokemon. But in the Alolan region of the Pokemon world, it is a Ice type. So the water that's the uh, that's a group in there. So that's where that comes in. Moving on. Oh. Eevee! Thank you, Eevee! Beautiful! The evolution Pokemon, the only Pokemon in the uh, Pokemon world in the first generation that could have had four total forms. So we had Eevee, then we had Jolteon, Flareon, and Vaporeon, and went on to get Glaceon, and Leafeon, and Umbreon, uh, and Sylveon, the fairy type. Just so many different types of Pokemon uh, that could evolve into with the use of um, stones. So you had like a Fire Stone or a Leaf Stone that would, you would use to uh, get it to evolve into those characters. So cool. Eevee's awesome. There's a whole episode about Eevee and uh, a little brother whose brother's... Um, we're trying to get him to force it to evolve into a Jolteon or Flareon or Vaporeon that they all had, but uh, brother said, "No, I like Eevee just the way he is," and I think that uh, I think that's a good way to uh, think about today. You know, we're okay with just being an Eevee, even if we only know Gnaw and have a uh, can do 20 points of damage and have 60 HP. We can still be good friends and, and be happy. I think that's a good message. Yeah. All right, moving on. Ah, uh, I know. <coughs> Zero percent about this Pokemon, but it is wild looking. Look at that bug. Oh, it's a Venus flytrap. Okay, Carnivine. Very cool. So, wow, look at that. Loom over. This attack does 10 damage less for each damage counter on this Pokemon. Very cool. Okay, all right. So if you're fighting with this Pokemon and you've got no damage on him, he'll do a he'll do a he'll do a, a metric butt ton of damage. 90 damage is wild, but uh, if he takes damage, makes that um makes that less effective okay all right all right a little bit a little bit of a high risk move but i can understand why cool oh riolu look at that riolu so beautiful uh if you notice this pokemon here we uh got a little glimpse of in a previous card we might go into a little conversation about this character much like we mentioned for um uh super smash brothers uh this is a playable character um not riolu but it's evolutionary form uh really neat pokemon with um with a, a connection and we talk about that in a later stream all right, moving on. Turtwig. Oh, okay. Totally. Turtwig is Diamond and Pearl. Absolutely. Trico that we talked about earlier as a starter Pokemon was definitely um, from Ruby and Sapphire. Turtwig was the grass starter Pokemon. His name, he is a tiny leaf Pokemon. Look at that tiny leaf on his head. What's it doing? Just a little thing, a thing, a thing, a thing. Oh, it's mad. You know, if this was your Pokemon, you know, you would just be like, what's up, Turtwig? Let's go, let's go, let's go eat some grass, you know? Just let, just let him roam around the little grasslands here. Got some trees to enjoy. Take a cool, cool little sip of water with a little turtwig beak there. Ah, oh, so cool. Love turtles. Very cool Pokemon. Awesome. Another Uyama. Uyama. Oh, sorry. Oyama, which will be in Japanese. Very cool. Pardon the sniff. Okay. Here we go. This is the business, folks. This is why we're here. Electivire. Electivire, such a neat Pokemon. They decided... Uh, in the sorry, I keep smacking the music stand that like is holding my phone. So get that little vibration. Sorry about that. Electivire is so absolutely cool. Later on, so there was this obviously this Pokemon. It says evolves from Electabuzz. Electabuzz was part of the original 151 Pokemon. Later on, they decided, you know what? Let's go ahead and make an evolutionary form. Let's continue this lineage because Electabuzz was one of those Pokemon that did not evolve, much like Lapras and Chansey and uh, Scyther. And, uh, and a couple of other Pokemon, uh, like Jinx and Mr. Mine, they were all single-stage Pokemon. But afterwards, they decided, you know what? Let's give them evolutionary form. And I think this is a pretty, pretty cool-looking um, looking dude. Look at all that electricity. It's pretty wild, you know? But um, 
Electabuzz has a really neat story about the origin. Uh, I'll go into that later. I love talking about Pokemon origins and what their designs are based off of. Maybe we'll go in depth someday. Just, uh, but moving on, man. Electivire, cool card. I'll put him off to the side. Oh, Togedemaru. Such a cool Pokemon. In every single generation of Pokemon, there has to be a Pikachu clone, like something that stands in. So like in, uh, obviously, Pikachu in the first generation, second generation, you had Meryl. Meryl was the... Um, Oh, super cute. Oh, I, I, I can uh, understand. It was that one time, Jade, that uh, we uh, had pictures of uh, like little gophers, not gophers, what are they called? <laughs> Hamsters <laughs> at work. And uh, I remember there were some tears involved. We were all, uh, we're all, we were all moved by how adorable the, uh, the, the gophers, the, gosh, not chipmunks, not chipmunks, hamsters, they're called hamsters, uh, but yes, Token Tomorrow absolutely pulls in your heartstrings, roly, po roly poly Pokemon, what more could you want, oh, Kayla, I have to go back, gotta give you a little drop here, because just earlier, I was thinking of you, because what did we pull just for you, Kayla, I'm gonna hold this on just for a second in case there's a lag, but just for you, Kayla, thank you for joining. There is your Eevee, just like you saw the other day. Pikachu, Eevee, best friends. Such cool Pokemon from the original grouping to 150. Anyway, back to... Uh, I know, I know, just for you, right? All right, Togedemaru, uh, thank you, Jade. Absolutely adorable, super cute Pokemon. It's electric type, kind of just like Pikachu, except for he's got yellow cheeks instead of red. How adorable. Electro Smash. So just imagine how cute this Pokemon is, but it's going to move like Electro Smash. Like, come on now. That's like so violent but i mean you know hey when you're little and you got a big world in front of you uh eevee's your fave what uh, everybody else on the on the stream what are your favorite pokemon do you have a favorite pokemon from when you used to play pokemon if you did and if you didn't what's your favorite one you've seen today talk to me in the comments below spinda spinda is a spot panda pokemon just consistently confused all the time like yours truly your active pokemon is now confused use this attack teeter punch do a little bit of damage make your pokemon confused give yourself the the a little bit of a um foot up in the battle there you go 80 hp can take some attacks from another pokemon very cool moving on Ooh, trombeak very neat i always loved bird pokemon i thought they were so cool bugle beak pokemon Oh, and, oh, Pippi Peek, -pe -pe -pe, look at that, Pippi Peck, oh, man, oh, dude, I want that Pokemon card, that would be a really fun Pokemon card to have, I bet you, next stream, we're gonna get one of these cards, mark my words, I will put that off to the side, along with our, uh, four Zerua, that we, sorry, the three Zerua, if there's not a fourth one, I tell you one thing, that would be quite the shame, but we already have three, Liz Clevin said we were gonna get 60 of them, I don't know, let's see here, all right, oh, wow, Herdier, oh, reason I'm gonna put this aside, next stream, we're going to get the evolutionary form of this one for sure. Definitely going to get it. Herdier. Very cool Pokemon. A loyal dog Pokemon. What more could you want out of life? A loyal Pokemon by your side, but is also just like a dog. So cool. Lillipup. Oh my gosh, look at that little Pokemon it evolves from. So adorable. Uh, just from a littlest pup to the most stoutest of pups. Look at him. He's so regal. Little Scotty dog. Oh, beautiful Pokemon. Love him so much. Love that design. Just looks looks enough just like a dog that it could be a real thing, but just real enough or just uh, just different enough that it looks like a Pokemon. So cool. Froki, oh man, Froki is such a cool starter Pokemon. Froki is one of the starter Pokemons from the more recent generations. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this would be from X and Y. I think that's what generation Froki is from. So cool. I get so unfamiliar with the new generations because I'm such a vintage collector. Uh, that's the whole reason for the stream. For those of you who just joined, I'm a vintage Pokemon card collector. I've got a pretty expansive collection of vintage Pokemon cards in a variety of, um, you know, states. Like I've got mint cards, near mint cards, cards that are, you know, worth a fair value of money. But these cards, um, you know, the new ones not so familiar with. So I figured I'd do this stream today. All right, Froki. Thanks for uh, Ribbit joining us there. Moving on. <laughs> This is so goofy. <laughs> what is this Pokemon? Bergmite? Oh, that's... Kayla, I'm telling you. Make yourself your own Pokemon deck. Bring it back next time. Maybe we'll have a little Pokemon fight. We'll stream that. Kayla versus Scott. Come on now. So super cool. Bergmite. What is this? Ice Chunk Pokemon? I can't tell if it's mad or if it's just like mildly happy with this design. I can't tell whether or not it's got these like jagged, like this, like this line here, whether that it's, is its mouth or whether 
this line here is its mouth like is it just like hey hey my name's uh my name's bergamite uh i'm just here for a good time you know just chilling out in the ice or whether it's just like <laughs> the whole time it just exists in a like constant pain of being frozen who knows but still adorable kind of like a little ice bug you know super cool oh i love this pokemon design never seen it before moving on clauncher Oh, tell me about it. So cool. Look at this design. This is a Pokemon I would have loved to have as a kid because um, it still has that, like, you know, it looks just enough like a real, like, creature, like a real, like, uh, animal in real life um, that uh, that it could be real, but it still has that mystery of, like, it being a Pokemon. It's blue, you know? Uh, so wild. In the background there, you got something that looks like the Eiffel Tower. That's because one of the most recent generations of Pokemon took place in basically, and I believe that was X and Y, if I'm not wrong, took place, um, in, in, in like a, in, in like a clone of France. Oh, folks, we have looped already. We are back. That means we're pr coming pretty close to the end of the stream. The Pokemon theme song. Let's hurry up here. All right, so Clauncher uh, is super cool. Like I said, each each generation of Pokemon takes place in a different region, and uh, and this one took place in a. Uh uh, clone of Paris. Uh, some of the other genera generations of Pokemon took place in places like the Kanto region of Japan, which is a real uh, region of Japan. And it takes, you know, and then the Hoenn region, which was the second generation, took place in another part of Japan. The most recent generation, which is Sword and Shield, takes place in like a clone of like Europe. It's got like Europe based Pokemon, uh, like England, like proper Pokemon, you know. So, all right, moving on, because we're getting pretty close here. Oh, wow. What is this? Oh, this is so wild. Golurk. Say autom automaton Pokemon. Oh, I love automatons. Things that move by themselves, like little creations. That's pretty wild. Yeah, look at what it evolves from. Gollet. I would have loved that Pokemon. Looks like a little uh, little automaton up there. And you got Reshiram in the background, just firing off a major rocket, which is weird because this Pokemon is not. It's not a rocket Pokemon. It's like a, like an animal. So like, what's going on there? You know. But this one makes sense that it's blasting off into space. I mean. Come on, Golurk Hammer, 120 damage. Whoa, put that in your Pokemon deck. Knock, get some total knockouts, you know? There's a, That's an uncommon card we talked to earlier. Pokemon Go, yeah, I did play Pokemon Go when I lived in Baltimore because there were I was a little closer to the city. And then when I first moved here, I did play Pokemon because I lived up in uh, Germantown, Nashville. For those of you who don't know him from Nashville, uh, I'm a... I'm a moved here a couple years ago but i used to play it when i lived up in germantown because there were things in the area but down here in the part of the city that i live in now not too much nearby and i didn't really have the time for it so i did stop playing pokemon go but i would be open to uh getting back into it because i'm doing more walks around the town so if i can find some pokemon gyms to get to i love doing that uh if you live in a city i highly recommend pokemon go can definitely get you out maybe you'll go find a golurk huh who knows or maybe a little gollet or any of the other pokemon we've seen today gotta catch them all you know Stunfisk. Just, I mean, let's let's read the little description of this one. Its skin is very hard. It so it is unhurt even if stepped on by sumo wrestlers. How specific! It smiles when transmitting electricity. He's just like, you know, I'm just happy to do my job. You know, Thundershock, super cool. This Pokemon, fighting type Pokemon, as we see here, but uh, uses electricity. Imagine stepping on this thing, just kind of staring up at you. No. Uh -huh. Old Stunfisk, I'm here to get your feet. A little nibble on your toes a little bit. Shoot you with some electricity. Love to run into that in real life. Ooh, a purloin. Oh, yes. A devious Pokemon. Looks like cat. Super cool. It's cute act is a ruse when victims let down their guard they find uh their items taken it attacks with sharp claws who would want to run into that look at that in the background of the night just kind of living its own life so wild another spirit bomb no 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 shouldn't have been figuring out how many zero we should have been collecting how many spirit bombs were we gonna get on this stream this is like the fourth one i'm so unfamiliar with this pokemon but it is pretty cool all right folks so that was a complete stream of all of the songs from the original tv show from the first generation and this was a p mystery power cube got this from good old wally world today um no real excellent cards that were from earlier generations. We were, you know, maybe looking for Zapdos or Dark Charizard or maybe even some of the original Pokemon cards like, uh, you know, like Venus or Blastoise or Charizard that this card, that this box says that it is seeded with. But as we saw, that was deep seeded in untruth. However, 
we did find some really cool ones. We got some cards that we're looking forward to on the next stream. We're looking forward to get the evolution, pre-evolution of Trumbeak because this little card up here in the feather, uh, PP pack, I really want that card. And I'm going to get that card. I'm going to sleeve it. He's going to be my little, he's going to be my little dude. I'm going to keep him forever. So cool. We'll look out for that on the next stream. Talked a little bit about Pokemon history. We talked about some of the original cards that were reprinted uh, into this new set. Talked about e-reader cards, which were such a strange part of Pokemon history. Um, the e-reader series. I'll talk about that on a future stream. Talked a little bit about Pokemon grading. Talked a little bit about like what to look for. We saw on the back of one of these cards, there was like a little notch. Aha, there he is, which shows that this card is a little bit lower quality because it is damaged. I can show you some of the cards that I have that are near mint and they are getting ready to go off to be graded uh when a card is graded for quality that it spirit bomb what are you doing here unwelcome man come on no i'm kidding um so spirit bomb uh, this card is probably worth like a quarter of a penny or whatever but uh some of the cards that i have that are vintage will be sent off for grading so that i can make sure that they are as quality as i want them to be and uh we'll see what that looks like on a on a future stream when i um when I send those off after I show them off to everybody. So if you join me today, I'm so grateful for your time. This is just something for me. I wanted to look forward to something to do on my Sunday uh, besides all the you know regular cleaning and stuff that I have to do. So uh, I decided to uh, just do this little joyful stream. Um, and uh, next time, folks, I've already got the next one planned. I am so excited. We're going a little bit more overboard for the next stream because we are going to open up this awesome box. This is like a lunchbox uh, collector's tin. This is from the most recent Pokemon set from Sword and Shield, a treasure chest packed with Pokemon. Five booster packs, three foil cards, a cool Pokemon coin, sticker sheet, mini portfolio, notepad. Who doesn't want a notepad? And a code card for the Pokemon TCG Online. Oh, man. Look at that. So cool. These are the new starters for Pokemon. I don't know. Looking at these characters, I like, I, I would, if I were a kid, I'd still love, you know what? Not if I were a kid. I am a kid and I love these Pokemon designs. They're so cool. Look at that. Awesome. Oh, and there's a legendary Pokemon, the Sword and Shield Pokemon, which I do not know the names. That's why I'm getting back introduced into them. Because again, Vintage Collector, just getting back into the back into the fray here. So if you join me today, thank you so much. You are loved and appreciated. Um, love yourself, forgive yourself, love others so much in these times. Give each other lots of uh lots of grace and patience. Be a good neighbor, and remember you make today special just by being you. Good old quote from Mr. Rogers. We can use more of that in today's world. So thank you so much. Love you all very dearly. And we'll catch you next time. Bye, everyone.